Welcome to the next episode of A Glass of Wine with Market Minds. I'm very privileged to be here today with Richard Lefley, founder and CEO of MicroInsure, one of the world's leading providers of microinsurance on the planet. MicroInsure sets out to provide affordable, simple insurance products to the mass market in developing countries. Most of the world's population are categorised as low income, with the average living wage between $3 to $4 a day. MicroInsure takes a unique approach to distributing insurance products, partnering with large telco companies and exploiting the ubiquitous use of smartphones in the developing world. To date, MicroInsurance has registered almost 50 million customers since its inception in 2002 and paid almost $30 million worth of claims. Richard, what is the fundamental concept of microinsurance, and can you sum, sum it up in a sentence? Well, I think microinsurance is just very simple. Uh, it's a very simple insurance, so it's typically personal accident, life, or hospital cash. So it's the, it's the kind of the risks that consumers have uh, at the top of their list. Um, very simple product design, um, often products with no exclusions, no age restrictions, um, and very very low cost. So it's, it's around kind of reaching out to uh, a large number of people are uh, normally distributed through some kind of group like a telco uh, or a bank. When did the idea of microinsure come to you and how long did it take you to act? So uh, almost 15 years ago to the day um, I was a reinsurance broker in, in London and I was just fascinated by why it was that people in Africa and Asia really didn't buy insurance. and I, and I thought about it and thought, well, you know, the, the risks they face every day are huge, and yet they really aren't, if you look at the statistics, they, they just aren't buying insurance, 97% of people just didn't have insurance. And so I started to, um, to look in, into it, and, you know, I went off and did some voluntary uh, service in Zambia, um, lived in these communities, found out quite a lot more about, um, about how they functioned, and I realized that insurance would be a fantastic safety net that stopped people falling back into poverty as they worked their way kind of up the, uh, the income ladder. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I joined, I left uh, Benfield Gregg, which is now, of course, Aon Benfield, and I joined uh, a microfinance organization who was lending money to, to groups of women, and I started to create these products um, back in 2002. Um, and today, uh, you know, it's a very different company. What was the most difficult challenge you faced in, in gathering financial support and, and how did you achieve the lion's share of the funding that enabled you to, to launch the company um, to its full strength? I think people thought it was crazy when we started out uh, because it, bear in mind it was the height of the HIV epidemic and I was you know, proposing to go, um, to go and ensure people who were living with HIV in, in Africa. Um, but you know, once we had a little bit of success, uh, we were able to go to people at the Gates Foundation um, and they were able to finance the business, and then, um, you know, uh, after that, we were able to then switch to more commercial forms of funding once we demonstrated the business model. And so today we have, you know, um, AXA, uh, Sanlam, uh, Pierre Bidiai, who of course is the founder of eBay, and, and people like um, the IFC World Bank as, as investors. So, um, you know, we've been able, as we've been able to demonstrate the model, we've been able to then um, uh, kind of attract, you know, different forms of funding. Was it difficult attracting the Gates Foundation? Uh, a little. Um, <laughs> initially, it was just a case of they hadn't even really got insurance on their scope. So um, I actually moved from the UK to the US because I um, realized that we just needed to be nearer to them. Um, and uh, I, I stalked them a little bit. I, I went and sat in hotel lobbies where I knew that they were going to be speaking at, at events. And, um, and I just uh, tried to you know, buttonhole them as they were going into meetings and start standing in lifts tell them about what we were doing and, and eventually um, kind of wore them down and to the point where they, they agreed to meet with us and, um, and told them what we were doing and um, took us about 12 months from that point on but they eventually gave us $25 million to stay away. <laughs> that's a, that's a good, uh, good incentive to go away. Um, how many customers do you estimate MicroInsure will have by 2020? I have absolutely no idea. I mean, we have 47 million customers today. Um, and it's growing kind of rapidly. You know, last year I think we put on 20 million customers, so it's difficult to retail, really but it'd be great if we could get to 100 million. And how long does it take for you to pay a claim on average? Um, on average, um, well, more than 80% of our claims are paid the same day. So, you know, in a country like Pakistan, if you get us the papers by, um, by 10 a.m. in the morning, we will 
pay you by QPM latest. Um, and uh, wow. 85% of those clients are rural. So um, it's about having very simple products and processes. Thank you. And any advice to aspiring entrepreneurs? Don't give up. I think um, a lot of people thought that I was, uh, was crazy, but I think it's, just, it's that intentionality. It's about kind of waking up every day and deciding to uh, just keep going. And um, when, when everyone else would have given up and gone home, then keep going and just keep going. And, you know, that doesn't mean don't learn from your mistakes. It means fail fast, but don't, you know, the, the underlying concept was that insurance insurance was going to be valuable for, for low income people in Africa and Asia. It may well be that you have to, to try and invent that a hundred times over about different approaches that you might take and learn from what, what didn't work from the last uh, experiment, the last experience, but don't change the underlying premise, which for me was insurance for the mass market. Excellent. Richard, thank you very much for your time.